Hi everyone, Exotic PC here doing a video review of the Sager NP9772. We have the Dash, Dash S variant in front of us today. Uh, this is built off the Clevo P770ZM. It's a 17.3 inch 1920 by 1080 matte type screen. For the CPU, we have an i7-4790K unlocked, and that is a true desktop CPU in there. For the graphics card, we're using the NVIDIA GTX 980M with 8 gigs of GDDR5, 32 gigs of memory installed. It has a 512 gigabyte Samsung XP941, which is a PCI Express by 4 uh, SSD drive in there. It also has a 1 terabyte, 7200 RPM. There is no optical drive in this computer. Uh, for the wireless card, we have the killer AC1525. Windows is not standard on any Sega computers, but you can select that on our configuration page. And on this model, we do have Windows installed onto it, obviously. For the dimensions, we're looking at 16.46 inches wide, 11.1 inches deep, and then 1.52 inches thick. It's weighing in at 8.6 pounds, and that is including the battery. And then for the warranty, it does come with a one-year manufacturer's parts warranty, uh, but we will also include lifetime labor warranty coverage on there as well. We'll take a look at the screen viewing angles. Again, this is a 1920 by 1080 matte type screen. We have our colorful gradient up, so you're going to really look for any type of color washout as I spin this around here. And we're going off to the left-hand side. And just keep an eye on the color, see if that shifts on you much. And I will keep an eye in person to see if I'm picking up anything different than what the camera picks up. You can see it's washing out that red a little bit. I'm not really seeing that in person. A little brightness on the greens there, but again, not seen in person either. So that looked good, left and right viewing angles. Let's go ahead and pull it down. And let's go ahead and move that back up slowly so you can watch the colors. That camera is picking up some type of color shift there. Again, I'm not really seeing that in person. We'll lean it back, and the camera looks like you can definitely see on the camera from there to here. But in person, I am not seeing that. So we got that lean back all the way. And let's go left and right with it. So good viewing angles in person. The camera definitely looked like it was shifting colors quite a bit there. But I don't think that's anything to worry about. Take a quick look at the exterior finish here. As you can see, there is a Sager logo on the back of it. It's not backlit, so there's not going to be a light sitting back there. Uh, and then the whole chassis itself is rubberized. So it's going to give it a little bit better durability, and that's going to be on the back of the LCD panel as well as on the palm rest, the whole C surface there. It's going to have that rubberized coating on it as well. Having a look at the keyboard here, this is a full size that includes the number pad off to the side of it here on the right. As you can probably see, it is also backlit. For the keyboard style, this is what they call an island style, and there's little ridges on each of the keys. So let me see if I can zoom in, and maybe you can see that. But right off to the side of each key, it goes down, and then there's a little ridge right off to the side. So they're up on a little island, if you will. So that's why they call it that. For the flex, there's really not much flex on it at all. Just pressing away here, as you can see, just normal key type. Key presses are here. You're not getting any flex. If I press down on it, it's still very solid on there. Uh, if anything, the whole section might go down a little bit, and I'm pressing pretty hard on there. 
So keyboard flex is not going to be an issue that you have with it. Let's take a look at the touchpad here. So you can see there's a left and right click and it's separate than the touchpad itself. And right in the middle is a fingerprint reader. So if you want to use that instead of entering a password every time, you can set that up with the included software and just swipe your finger anytime that you need to enter in a password. So a really good keyboard. And as you can see, it is colored. And you can adjust that with the included software on there. So let me see what I can do for you here. Get a little bit of both on there. So if I wanted to go off to the right hand side here, we'll just select that. And if I want it green, we'll just say, I'll click on that and, and it'll be green for you. So you can change the whole, all, the whole keyboard if you want to do that. You can go zones, left side, right side, uh, middle, and then there's different features like you can have it going in a wave or breathe or have it go along with the audio and this is just all included with the software that comes with it so you can change that to your liking also you'll notice the WASD keys your gamer keys are highlighted there so a little bit easier to locate those and that's what most people use for their forward left back and right um, you can control the brightness levels off with the number pad here just hold down the function key, and if you press minus, it'll go down in brightness, and there seems to be like three settings there. So there's a low, medium, and high, and you can also turn it on and off up here as well. Um, so you'll notice that right on the keyboards, and you'll see the logos on the keyboard to help you know what you're doing on that. Take a look at the ports on the computer. Starting on the back left-hand side, you'll see the Ethernet port, followed by three USB 3.0 ports. Then we have your memory card reader. Then we have a combo USB eSATA port. So four USBs on the left, and one of those can be used as a eSATA as well. Spin on the front left-hand side, really nothing going on on the front. up on the right hand side here there's a USB 3.0 and then there's an optical out that's your SPDIF so the red light there if you're hooking it up to a, a receiver and you want your Dolby digital surround or 5.1 surround um, it will plug right into there with the adapter you have your headphone out then your microphone and then your line in and then your Kensington lock is the last one there kind of blurry I apologize about that then we have the exhaust port. So here's one on the left-hand side. And that, I believe, is going to be the CPU primarily. And then on the other side is going to be your GPU. But in the middle, we have an HDMI, a display port, your AC adapter, and then another display port. So you have two full-size display ports on the back. And then there's the exhaust port following it up on the right-hand side there. And that's going to be for the GPU. And we just end up right back on the left hand side where we started off. Just going to show you a couple of the status indicator lights here. The one on the left uh, with the battery indicator lets you know if the AC adapter is plugged in. It's currently not, so you see that it's not lit up. And then just to the one on the right lets you know if the computer is on or not. So it comes in handy if your lid is closed and you can just kind of peek over and see if the computer's on. If you don't mean for it to be on, you can open it up and turn it off. Uh, there's a couple more by the power light. I'll change the camera angle and we'll go over those real quick. And here are the rest of the status indicator lights. Right in the middle, that's your power button. On the left where that airplane is, just lets you know if you're in airplane mode so your Wi-Fi is off. Next to it, you really can't see it, but there is the hard disk drive indicator. So if there's any read-write going on, you'll see that blink at you. And then it's just followed by your caps lock. So you can see there, number lock, and scroll lock. So there's your indicators uh, for the whole computer. We'll jump into the Sager BIOS to check out the features and options available to us. The computer is completely off. I'll just turn it on and start spamming delete. Or F2, actually. That's right. F2 for setup. All right. 
right, here we go. So on the main page, we can change the system date and time. You can see what's, avail what's in the SATA ports here. So that's just showing that one terabyte hard drive. The offboard SATA controller configuration, and then the rest of it is just going to be more information about what's in the computer. So the CPU system memory, the video card that's in it. Let's go over to the advanced tab. So we have our advanced chipset control, and then we have our combo slot, Intel uh, virtualization technology, Intel rapid start technology. SATA mode, AHCI boot logo, power on boot beep, battery low alarm beep, and those are all enable or disable. We have our security where you can set your password and then your boot options. So there's your Samsung drive. And then we have the uh, network, the network drive BBS priorities, hard drive BBS priorities, and UEFI settings. So a uh, very stripped down BIOS as with most notebooks. We'll just hit the exit where we can uh, exit discarding changes. And I'll go ahead and do that. And it'll boot like regular and go back into Windows for you. All right, we're going to check out the boot time on here. I have my phone set up, so we're going to time it. The computer is completely off. I'll hit the power button and it'll start at the same time. Three, two, one, go. And I'll do my best to stop it once we get to the Windows desktop. Again, this is using the Samsung uh, XP941 PCI Express. SSD is installed in there. And taking a little bit longer than we would like, but still not horrible. There we go, it's just a little over 41 seconds for a cold boot up till the desktop. Thought we'd show you the hard drive speed here. Again, this is the 512 gigabyte Samsung XP941 uh, M.2 PCI Express by four speed here. So it's a single drive. And you can see the single drive's really fast. For your sequential speed, you're looking at 994.7 megabytes per second read, 821 megabytes per second write time, and the 4K speeds, you're seeing 30.17 read and 83.43 megabytes per second write time. So really fast for a single drive. Typically, you need two in RAID to achieve these speeds, but that PCI Express uh, by four speed really helps this drive attain those higher speeds with just one. All right, we're going to run 3D Mark on here. We'll start off with Fire Strike. As you can see, the decibel meter is set up back to the rear exhaust port, so you can see how those decibels uh, react when the fans kick up while the computer is under load. I'll put the microphone back there as well so you can hear it. Um, as usual, we're going to overlay our thermal pictures so you can see where the heat is generated from it. And once it's all done, we'll go over the results, the temperatures, the performance, everything like that. All right, we're taking a look at the fire strike results. That's all finished up. You can see the score 8,426, graphics score 9,556, physics score 11,767, and that's higher than we've seen, and that really is due to the desktop CPU, that Intel i740-790K. Get a combined score of 3,645, so everything really good there. Let's take a look at the temperatures. We got hardware monitor running here. 
CPU temps, upper 80s, so 88, 89, 90, 82 on one of the low cores. So right in the upper 90s, we'd say. Um, and that is exactly kind of where we would expect it. Again, it's a desktop CPU in a notebook chassis. Um, so I would say those are good numbers to have. The GPU, very low number here, 66 Celsius. So on the lower end, so overall good performance, good numbers, everything where we like to see it. So that's 3D Mark Firestrike. We'll run a couple more and check out the results with those. Okay, we ran our second benchmark, 3D Mark Skydiver. You see the score here, 23,942. Graphics score, 30,491. Physics score, 11,515. And a combined score, 24,141. We'll take a look at how the CPU temps did during this benchmark. Kind of right where we saw it previously, 89, 84, 91, 92. So upper 90s, excuse me, upper 80s, lower 90s. GPU temp, 61. So a little bit lower temperature there. Uh, so performance temperatures, again, for the hardware that we're looking at, numbers are all looking good. All right, the last benchmark we're looking at is 3D Mark 11. You see the score here is P12,086. Graphics score of 12,616. Physics score 10,830. For a combined score 10,593. Take a quick look at the temp, see if they were uh, kind of where we've been seeing it. Even a little bit lower, 80, 84, 86, so lower to mid 80s this time. And the GPU temperature also low. We're looking at 61 Celsius there. So really good temperatures, performance, where we want it to be. So all around uh, with the benchmarks we've looked at, nothing to complain about this one. All right, we have it flipped upside down. We're going to go ahead and open up the bottom of the computer so you can check it out. It's unplugged, as you can probably notice. The battery is right here. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this and then use the slide to release it and remove the battery out of there. Just for safety reasons, of course, it's always good not to have power if you're going to have the bottom of the computer open. So um, the main panel here, there's one, two, three, four screws. Yeah, it looks like just four screws on there. Once you've taken those four, which I've already done, you just need to slide it back a little bit, and that'll lift right away. So what you'll first notice probably is all the cooling on here. So we have our left fan. Um, left fan, while it's upside down, it'll be the right hand side when you're using it normally. But this is going to be your GPU fan. You can see the GPU is right underneath here. We have our main heat sink here, and then the heat, cop, uh, heat transfer pipes going out to the fins so the fans can exhaust the heat out. Over here is going to be the CPU. So the CPU is underneath there. You'll see some, um, looks like stickers on it. And these are actually just to help you pull this whole assembly up. So if you're going to remove it for cleaning or to upgrade uh, the GPU or to reapply your thermal compound, you'll just want to unscrew the screws and then pull these up uh, to get those taken away. So again, the CPU is here. This is the other fan. You got two RAM slots here. And then there are two on the other side of the keyboard. So we're not going to undo that, but just so you know, the wireless card and two RAM slots are on the opposite side. CMOS batteries right down in there. And then there's another panel here. So you got one, two screws here. So once you've undone, undone those two, you can again just slide this forward and then lift this up and away. And what you'll find in here is one of the hard drives. There's room for a second hard drive here that just connects in right through here. And here's that Samsung drive. So it's an MSATA slot here. There is another MSATA slot that goes in here. But if this one's kind of tricky because if you use a, a fast one like this, that's a PCI Express, it's taken up the by four channel. And if you put something in here, it's, you're going to lose your speed on this. So if you have this one in here, you'll just want that one. If it was a standard MSATA, uh, excuse me, M.2 SSD, SSD not a PCI Express, and you could put one here and here and put them in RAID, but you would just really achieve the speed that a single drive can get you there. So uh, other than that, there's just a subwoofer right in the middle, and that will cover the bottom internals of the notebook computer. 
That's going to finish up our look at the Sager NP9772. As always, thank you for taking your time to check it out. Hopefully, you got some good information, some stuff you were looking for. If you have additional questions, give us a call. Uh, contact us any way you'd like. The phone number is one 289 9684 our email is sales at exoticpc.com and we have our live chat available so you actually get a chat with somebody for real uh, we're available from 9 to 5 30 central time monday through friday you can find the link for that on our website which is exoticpc.com that's www.xoticpc.com make sure to like the video if you've liked it Subscribe if you want to keep up to date with our video reviews. Any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them below. And as always, thanks again for taking your time to check out the video.